Happy birthday and a happy anniversary to all of those who are celebrating in the month of October. It's interesting this month because the birthdays and anniversaries come mid to the end of the month, where September, I think we had about 20, 25 birthdays. So again, I'm not going to do the math on that. But happy birthday, happy anniversary, if it's your birthday or your anniversary this month. We also want to um, say thank you to those who celebrated with us in the spirit of love and prayer and in service on last Saturday. We want to give another shout out to Rebecca and Richard Lawrence. They are the ones that donated this piano that Robin told us. So thank you for blessing us with the piano. And also to Dr. Paul, we want to thank him for blessing us with the drums the Derek toe up and now Shannon is warming up for us. So thank you for those donations. We don't take that for granted. Um, we continue to pray for those students and teachers and families as the uh, as you're returning to school. I understand that K through five will actually there's a delay. Initially they were going back to school on October 5th, but my understanding is now they push that back, at least for Hickory schools to January. So we thank you. We thank those who sit on the school board. We have Vitaly here. We thank our educators, uh, Diane, who have kept us up to date with what's going on there. We also want to give a special shout out to Lenore Ryan, to the Pre-Health Club. I was able to speak with the Pre-Health Club on last week. And I, I can say that our future is definitely bright. So I'm excited about that. If you have not registered to vote, please, 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 please register to vote. Uh, here is the website, the registration deadline. It has to be postmarked by Friday, October 9th. You can also register in person at the one stop site for your early voting. And early voting starts this month, October 15th goes through October 31st with election day on November 3rd. We do want to whisper a prayer for the White House. We understand that um, it's been reported that President and First Lady Trump have been infected or COVID-19 uh, positive, and they did fly uh, the President to the hospital for better care. So we are prayer uh, for the White House as well. This is, um, it's important also for you to complete your census information if you have not done that yet. And this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We were just talking about some of the survivors that we know that have breast cancer. My um, maternal grandmother also was a breast cancer survivor so this is close to us if you've not been screened same thing with men sometimes you know men don't realize men can also get breast cancer so if it's in your family please make sure that you are being screened appropriately i also found out this is infant loss month which i did not know um, before our, our pittsburgh prayer call on friday so with this being infant loss month, please, please, please be in prayer for those who have lost infants. I know it was in the news that John Legend and his wife recently lost their child. So please be in prayer uh, for those families who have lost infants. Um, we want to ask a special prayer for Ethan Davis. That's Kathleen Davis's nephew. She sent a prayer request. He's having surgery. He has a brain tumor that was removed that is between his cerebellum and his spinal cord. That can be a dangerous uh, area that affects how you walk and dizziness and those sorts of things. So please pray for him. And finally, our final announcement is in memory of Dr. Powell, uh, who passed. He was one of our community pillars, and he actually passed uh, last month. He was 95 years old. So that was a blessing for me to be able to sit under him and, and to be sprinkled by his knowledge and his wisdom. So we honor him. As we said, uh, today is our Communion Saturday, uh, we say our communion prayer, the same prayer, it's the Lord's uh, Prayer, we say this every Saturday, so if you will join in with me, this is found in Matthew 6, 9 to 13, if you want to read it straight from your Bible at home, it says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name, name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We also have a self-examination communion prayer. 
um, before we partake of our communion, we should examine ourselves. I think a lot of times uh, we skip over that part. We just are excited to commune with the Lord, but we don't take a moment to self-reflect and to pray about what we need um, forgiveness for. So we'll say the self-examination um, prayer, and then when Music Fellowship comes up to sing, uh, make sure that you gather your elements for the Lord's Supper. The scripture, 1 Corinthians 11, 28 to 34, says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Not discerning the Lord's body. That means not taking the Lord's body in this moment seriously. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. That means pray for one another as well. If we can, just take this moment, look at yourself. Is there something that we've done wrong? Have we thought something wrong? I was thinking the other day of, of the Ten Commandments and how a lot of us uh, feel like, well, I've never murdered or I've never stolen or, you know, I've always kept the Lord first. But what about when we get those things in our hearts? Remember, the New Testament says if you even think it, you're guilty. So if there's anyone you've murdered in your heart or if you've stolen in your heart or anything like that, <laughs> we need to, <laughs> my sister's looking at the kids, we need to make sure that we ask for forgiveness <laughs> for these sins. Amen. So look at yourselves. Think about what have I done wrong, Lord? Where have I fallen short? Present that to the Lord so that we can come clean with him before we partake in this Lord's supper. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity to examine ourselves. We thank you for your mercy and your grace for the times we don't examine ourselves, the times we don't think about these things that we have done against you. We pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would have mercy on us for any sin by head or hand or heart, Father God. And forgive us, Lord, for any lying or stealing or coveting or putting last or idolatry or uh, not keeping the Sabbath holy. Anything we did wrong, have mercy on us before we even partake in your supper. In Jesus' name we pray to so for his sake. Amen. Okay, music question. We are going to sing because he lives. Most of you know this song. Feel free to join in our home. And we pray over your elements. Great practice way for us to represent Jesus' body. Thank you. 
representation of his body. For your wine, your juice, your water, we pray that the Lord would bless these as sacraments to represent his blood in Jesus' name. The word says that, for I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. We give you this second opportunity to examine yourselves before we eat and drink together. If you want to comment. Thank And now, let us eat and drink together. changes your whole attitude, your whole focus, even the order in which things are done. Go ahead and remove the table and then have use of fellowship. Thank you. Thank God that we have a uh, special guest soloist today. <laughs> he loves when I put him on the spot. <laughs> Minister Chris Nivens is in the house. <laughs> so we're excited today after I'm here singing with us. Thank <laughs> you. 
want to get a screwdriver and fix all the <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's wiggling in his seat like he's got it here. Yeah.
everybody. So good morning, everyone. I just have a few questions for my team up here. Y'all ready, team? Did he pay it? Did he pay it? Yes, he did. Did he pay it? Did he pay it? Yes, he did. Did he pay it? Did he pay it? Yes, he did. All right. Here we go. Those songs work. 
<laughs> till I started typing. I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? So then Chris came in with jokes about my color codes. That's all right. Because those those parts, the soprano, the alto, and to God be the, to, uh, to God be the glory, <laughs> I tongue tied. I was so excited. But to God be the glory, we were able to sing it the way it's supposed to be sung. We were struggling, but God showed up right on time. Right on time. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is now time for the word. It is now time for the word. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God, we just praise you, Lord. We lift your name on high. We thank you so much, God, that you washed us wider than snow. You took away every sin. You didn't have to, but you took away all of them. So we appreciate it, God, that you didn't leave some for us to pay for, but you paid for all of them. We thank you for this day that you have given us to commune with you, to represent the fact that you took away every single sin, that you paid it all. Lord, we just lift your name on high. We glorify you. We praise you. We call on you as Lord of Lord the King of Kings. We come against any distraction that is trying to rise up in Jesus' name. We thank you so much for focus on your word and what you have to say today, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're here right now. We look forward to what you have to share, Father God. And we look forward to, uh, to the resulting miracles, God, for the souls that are saved, Father God, and the lives that are changed, Father God, and for those who are delivered and those who are healed just from this word right here. In Jesus' name, God, we praise you. In Jesus' name, we excitedly await wait to hear what you have to say and for his sake. Amen. because we want to switch it naturally, right? Like the Three Musketeers used to say, we want to say all for one and one for all, right? But today we're actually going to look at this spiritually, one for all and all for one, Jesus rose. Um, something occurred to me when I was meditating on this title, and I was thinking about how this today we're doing, we are celebrating the Lord's Supper and we're participating in it, but the Lord's Supper actually represents the Last Supper. And even then, Jesus had started making his sacrifice. Even then, he showed compassion and kindness to the disciples. They had no idea um, of the level of, of sacrifice that it would cover all of us, right? One for all that he was ready to commit to. And so today, we're actually going to focus on that. And then, as I was meditating and praying as God would have it, he took this message in a totally different direction. I thought he was going to stay right here in the New Testament, and he allowed us to go to the Old Testament today. So we're going to talk not only about Jesus, but one of Jesus' ancestors, because there's so much to be learned about and from King David. Um, and, and not only are we going to talk about what Jesus is doing for us now, but we're going to talk about what God did then and what he still does now. So in other words, this sermon is a sermon of thanksgiving. It's a sermon of praise. It helps us to put into perspective all that was done for us so that we can actually give our all for the one after he has given his life for all. It, there wasn't really much explaining that needed to be um, done as I started reading about the one for all and how he gave us life in itself. He gave us forgiveness. He gave us his own life. And then I started thinking about the all for one. And at first, I started thinking about all that we get to give back to him, right? So we get to give him all of our cares. He said, it casts all your cares on me because I care for you. Uh, we get to give him all of our ways because the word tells us, right, that we're supposed to trust in the Lord in all our ways and not lean on our own understanding. We get to give him all the thanks. And then once we give him all the thanks, we get to make all of our requests known to him. But then the Lord started to boil that down a little bit further. And he said, but wait a minute. I expect all those things from you so that you can get. But what I want from you so that we have a relationship is what I have told you in the Shema. In Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9, it says that we're supposed to give the Lord all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our might. That's the Shema, right? 
We know here at the Fellowship 1 to the Power 3 that Jesus repeated that when he was in Matthew, talking about how we love God with our all and love our neighbor as ourself. This is why today we're talking about the one for all and the, one, and the all for one. We were sitting there thinking about uh, back in the day how at the end of the offering we would sing all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. We all know that song, especially those who grew up in, in certain denominations. But what I realized is that God gave us the life that we're supposed to give back to him, right? He gave us the life, but we're supposed to live it for him. That's the one for all and the all for one, last uh, month we were playing music trivia on uh, Fellowship Funday. That's the fifth Saturday. We talked about that verse. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. And, and some people didn't know, and I didn't know when I was younger, that that's actually a scripture. It's not just a hymn. It's not just a song. It's actually a scripture. And so I started to drill down and look at what does that scripture mean. And when you start looking at what David was talking about and what he was doing when he wrote that verse, it changes your whole focus and your whole perspective. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here right now. So we're going to start with the New Testament version of that verse. And then we're going to go to the Old Testament. Um, the way that First, Second uh, Corinthians five fifteen says it, it says, "And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again." That's the one for all. He died for all, and the all for one is that that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them. Hallelujah. All things come of thee, O Lord. One God for all. That's Jesus. So that's the one for all. And then we are the all for one. That's why we celebrate today. That's why we celebrate the death and the resurrection that saves us from sin and from eternal death. That's why we partake in the Lord's Supper. That's why we take the, the bread and, and the cup. That's what this is all about, because a lot of times um, we do this out of tradition, and we don't realize the meaning, the, the heaviness of what it is that we are doing, right? So that's why we do it. And, and so what I have learned is the whole basis, the whole foundation of the Lord's Supper, the whole foundation and the whole basis of, of the Last Supper even is Christ's love, the one for all. That's the love that was demonstrated by his suffering, his bleeding, his, his rising, right? His raising himself up. He didn't stay dead. He got up. He rose. He didn't say, I'm tired. And they didn't appreciate me when I was on the cross anyway. Like we would have done. <laughs> hey, they can have it. I'm going to have it either way. <laughs> I hope y'all will be all right. <laughs> he didn't do that. He got up. He rose for us to make sure that we would have access to the throne and not only did he do that but to make sure that all of our sins are forgiven there's only one sin that cannot be forgiven that's blaspheming the holy spirit but all other sins thank you holy spirit can be forgiven so a lot of times mm, we forget about christ's love and we want to put people in our own court and judge them and say you are unforgivable and what you have done is unforgivable that's not christ that's not. That's a lie from the devil. As long as we confess our sins, right, then he's faithful and just to forgive us and able to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Sometimes we put ourselves in our own courthouse, in our own courtroom, and we put ourselves on the stand and say, I'm not worthy, Lord. Whatever I did, that's just too bad. And God is saying, as long as you confess, I can forgive you. You confess. And not just confess that you did it, but confess that, you, that it was wrong. Whatever we did was wrong, that he can forgive us. That's Christ's love. That's why he rose for us, right? That's the one for all and the all for one. That love that compels us. And why does it compel us? Well, 2 Corinthians 5.14 says it. One died for all, and therefore all died, right? That's the scripture, one for all and all for one. If we keep on reading, though, verse 16 starts preaching itself. It says, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. In other words, we're not looking at things in a worldly way anymore. We're looking at things spiritually. 
the new characteristic of the all for one, the new definition of the all, that's us for one, if you'll allow me to, to be redundant just one time, um, the word says in verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, there's freedom, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone and the new is here, so in other words, you're not who you used to be, so stop making those excuses. A lot of times we say, well, I can't do this and I can't do that for the Lord because I did this and I did that. We're not that person that did that. We're a new creation. That's what the word declares, right? The one for all. Jesus made us new. Jesus paid it all. We just say it. All to him we owe. So now we can give our all by living for that one, right? That's how we give our all. Verse 18 says, all this is from God. And here's what happened. He reconciled us to himself through Christ. He reconciled us. So why do we keep resisting reconciliation? He's already done it. He's like, here I am. Come on. I want us to be back in relationship again. But we keep on running away and making excuses not to be in his presence, not to be in relationship with him. It says, this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. That's it right there. That's that verse of freedom. He's not counting our sins against us. So why do we keep... Why do we keep counting our, our sins against ourselves? And why do we keep counting the sins of others against themselves? The word just said he's not counting, so what right do we have to count it? Why do we keep doing that? There's freedom in the word. There it is, one for all. What did the one do for all in case you need to catch up? He made sure that our sins were not counted against us. As a matter of fact, it continues. He's committed to us this message of reconciliation. So who is the all that will live for the one? It needs to be us. We're the all. Did y'all get it? We're the all. We're the one. We're the all that needs to live for the one. Verse 20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. Did y'all realize that? We're the ones who God is making his appeal through. When Jesus paid it all and we said all to him we owe, he should be able to make his appeal through us. It says we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That's what this is all about. In verse 21, closes 2 Corinthians 5, it says God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. Talk about sacrifice. All the stuff that we did wrong, God went ahead and sent his son to cover it. Half of us won't even tie somebody's shoe for them, let alone give our life for someone who treated us badly and treated our father, mm, Jesus, and went against our father. Y'all seen the sibling rivalry of one child is cutting up against the parent, the other kids talk bad about that. Well, I don't know why they treat treating dad like that. But Jesus said, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to go before God and I'm going to plead on your behalf with my blood. It doesn't get heavier than that. That is the one for all. Christ's love is the one for all, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's the all for one. But even before that, like we said, God started talking to me about King David and started bringing up that verse. That verse, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Now, I started thinking about King David, of all the people to write that verse, Remember, King David did some jacked up stuff, right? He slept with Bathsheba, then tried to cover it up by having her husband killed, right? He counted the people when God said don't count them. He wasn't perfect, just like we're not perfect, but he was still considered a man after God's own heart, okay? And that's not just a saying. We have the scripture if you need to look it up. 1 Samuel 13, 14, Acts 13, 22. It's in both, birth, in both of the Testaments, okay? He still, in spite of that, was considered a man after God's own heart. He still communicated with the Lord. He still was reconciled back to the Lord. And God considered him a man after his own heart. Talk about putting a stamp. And how do we know it was God? Because when you go back to 1 Samuel 13, 14, that is the prophet telling him that. <laughs> okay, when he was about to pay for what he did wrong, that's when the prophet said he was still a man after God's own heart. And so here we have it. We went on to 1 Chronicles 29, 
reading King David's last words. Did y'all know that? That's the end of the chapter. He was about to die, okay? It was time for his son Solomon to get ready to be on the throne and the people to be prepared for their next king. That's what's happening when we're talking about all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. So here he is preparing for his death and preparing for uh, what was to come and, and preparing for his lineage. Because remember, King Jesus came from King David's lineage, right? So he knew that that was going to come from him, from his seed, right? So he had to make sure that he was passing that baton correctly, parents. He started praying over his son. Hmm? How often do the parents pray over their children and what God has planned for them? we got to pray over that future now. Okay, we don't have to wait until the end of First Chronicles 29. The end of the story, in other words, right? The end of our account. We need to be praying over them now. God, prepare them for what you have called them to do. So he knew that uh, God had promised that a king from his line would forever sit on the throne. And if you're not sure about that, go to 2 Samuel 7, 16, right? He received this promise. He received the promise right after he had messed up. The one for all and the all for one, that would involve his line. His line would produce the one who would be born to die, to live again, so that we could live forever. That was King David's line. So he knew that was to come. And he knew about the benefits that we would be um, receiving because of this. So how do we know that God was already making preparations then for what we need now? How do we know that God was preparing in the Old Testament for what would happen in the New Testament and now? And where do we sit? Well, here's where we start reading this prayer of praise. Here's where we understand that song we grew up singing, All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Some of us, uh, my dad was saying, would switch up the words and not know. Sometimes if you go to a certain church, you go, well, is that how they sing that? I don't think that's the verse. You know, when we looking now to God be the glory, we got technology, they can put the words up so we don't mess them up. But when we were growing up, some of us would mumble through that. But here at the end of David's life, King David's life, in 1 Chronicles 29, verses 10 and verse 20, here he sits at the end of his life, and he is giving God all the praise. That's what he's doing. He's giving God all the praise after he gave God all the things that God gave him. That's why he said, all things come of thee, O Lord. Okay? That's why he said, of thy own have we given thee. All the stuff, Lord, that you gave me, I'm giving back to you at the end of my life. Before my son takes over, before this temple is ready. That is what happens. So if we wrap that up in what we just talked about, the one for all and the all for one is clear. We can seal it. We can put a stamp on it. All the things come from God, especially our lives. These are the lives that we're supposed to be giving back to him. Are we doing that? So here we are. First Chronicles 29, 14, talking about all things. David here is praying, but it's a praise prayer. There's different types of prayers, right? There's some petitions, and then there's some that are praise. This one is a praise prayer. And so here he is getting so excited about what God has done. You ever been like that? Like you get so excited, you start thanking him for one thing, and then you thank him for two, and you forget what you were supposed to be asking him for because you're just so excited. Dear God, we just thank you for life. We thank you for another day. We thank you for strength. We thank you for breath. We thank you for purpose, Lord. We thank you for every gift that you've given us, Lord. We thank you that we can see and we can hear. We thank you that we're able to talk to each other, even in spite of the pandemic. We thank that you kept us. We thank that you covered us. You start doing that, and you're like, now, wait a minute. What was I I'm praying for? Well, Lord, I thank you that I forgot what I was praying for because I'm so excited about how you keep blessing. That's a praise prayer. That's when you're focusing on what God has done for you instead of what he can still do for you. You focus on what he's done for you, knowing that then he'll do for you what you need him to do. That's a praise prayer. We need more praise prayers. Amen. We know and we can thank God and say, Lord, you paid it all, so all to you I owe. Sin had left this crimson stain, but you washed it white as snow, okay? Doesn't take uh, Minister Nivens to get up here and start singing like he ain't got no sense. We're about to fall out up here. Doesn't even take that. Doesn't even take that. The heart's already ready. Amen. The heart's already ready to see what God has and just to praise him instead of petitioning him. That's what we are 
talking about that foundational praise. So here it is at First Chronicles 29. Um, David said, praise be to you, Lord. That's what he started with. Remember, he's a king. He says, praise be to you, Lord, because he wanted to be sure that the people he was talking around knew he was talking to the Lord. See, David was praying his prayer in the midst of a congregation. This wasn't a private prayer. He wasn't in his closet. He wasn't like, Lord, I'm going to praise you over here, and then I'm going to show out over there because I'm the king, and they need to bow to me, and I can't let them see me break it down and humble myself and just be me in front of the folks. He wasn't doing that. He said, praise be to you, Lord, in spite of my crown, in spite of my robe, in spite of my service, in spite of everything you brought me through.
said, this one, all the brothers he went through. Why, well, it's David. That's the, the daddy. Well, there is one more. Like, I know, I'm sure in this heart, he said, I know you ain't talking about him. He out there cutting up with some, uh, trying to fight some bears and, and lions over a, a sheep. Okay, most of us would have been like, that sheep going to have to be gone, but daddy going to have to just take the L for that sheep. But not David. <laughs> David fought. He fought. He was a fighter. That's why he couldn't even uh, build that temple because of the blood on his hands because he was a warrior. Right? Right? But he kept on praising him. But what I love about this, they were building the temple, and what it says is he starts praying over the people, right? He says, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. This is where he prayed over the people, and then he prayed over his son, Solomon, because Solomon was about to take the throne. And then what happened, though, is the people started praising him, too. They started praising God. I guess it just caught like fire, you know? You ever see someone who's excited, and, and you see them crying, and they're laying out before the Lord, and you're trying to be serious, and you're looking at your clock, and next thing you know, you're like, hold on, I'm trying to... And you start jumping too? Huh? That's what they did. You know you've done it. That's why you I've done it. Okay? It's my, I'm like, okay, love, well, we need to wrap. Oh, hold on. I thought we were going to wrap it up. Next thing you know, I'm looking up at the ceiling. How come, I, how come Lord, I'm not looking at the screen? What, what happened? What happened? That's what happened. They praise the Lord. They praise the Lord. They praise the Lord. From King David to King Jesus, they praise the Lord. The one being the Holy Trinity, they praise Amen? The all for one is what King David told the people to do. He said, praise him. And this is what they did. Not only did they praise him, but they bowed down prostrating themselves before the Lord and the King. Do y'all know what that means? Face down on the floor. That's prostrate. That's the lowest, the most humble position that you can take. And they did that before the Lord. Unashamedly. Amen? Unashamedly. Again, remember the King. He's the king. Jesus paid it all, and, and all to him uh, we owe. So that means that when we're confessing and we're believing and we're thanking God for all that uh, he has done, we have to recognize that he paid it all, so all to him we owe. They praised the Lord. They didn't stop. They didn't think about it. They praised the Lord. Uh, instead of thinking about watching somebody praise, they praised with them. Instead of thinking about what David was saying, I believe they started thinking about their own stuff. And they started thinking about what they had to praise God through and what they had to praise God for. They probably started thinking about, well, wait a minute. He did bring us all through these wars. Remember, this is the end of David's life. So they had been through some stuff, right? Y'all remember all the wars King David had to fight and King Saul had to fight and the prophets had to come. When you start thinking, wait a minute, his blessing is our blessing. If the leader is praising, then we need to praise, right? And that is what they did. They praised the Lord, but not only did they praise the Lord, they laid prostrate. The other thing that I love about it is when they laid prostrate, it says before God and the king. They didn't just lay before the king. They didn't give the king a higher honor than God. And then, and then the, the third thing or fourth thing or whatever number we're on that I love is that King David set the example. He set the example. A lot of times, um, as spiritual leaders, we tell people what to do, but we don't do it ourselves. That's painful, but it's true. Yeah, you know, I'm going to tell you to give, but I'm going to keep what I... Come on now. And it's not personal. Don't take it personal if anyone's tuning in. It's true. You know? I'm going to tell you to go and, and make this sacrifice, but I'm not going to. I'm going to tell you to show up, but I'm not going to show up. All right, These are lessons. David took all that he owned, dedicated it to the temple, in front of the people, humbled himself, praised the Lord, in front of the people, didn't say, I'm too good, or I'm going to save this for my, because God had told him to give it in his heart. So he gave it. And then he died a little bit after that. And guess what he did also? He set an example for his son. Amen. This is how this kingdom needs to continue, right? He didn't just pull his son aside and say, this is what you need to do. He set that example for his son. And again, when he prayed over the people, and what I love, he says, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. That's our prayer for everybody. At the fellowship, one to the power of three. That's the prayer. Everybody who's connected to the fellowship, one to the power of three. And any other church of God. 
But sometimes we get caught up in our little space. Let's just pray for all God's people today. Praise the Lord. Keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. We're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to pray these prayers of salvation and the prayer of rededication, and then we're going to have music fellowship come and sing. Usually they come before the prayers. We want to pray these prayers first, okay? So if you didn't know that there was one who gave it all for you and one who gave it all for us, and for us he gave it all, which means we should be giving him our all. You've never given your life to Christ. Today's that day. Um, I was talking to someone who told me when they first got saved, they didn't know what to do after that. Like they gave their life to Christ and it was like, what do we do next? If you have given your life to Christ online, call us, email us. If you go to another church and you gave your life to Christ online, make sure you get with a spiritual leader, your pastor, your minister, so we can pray this prayer with you so you'll be kept. Because trust, once you give this, once you make this commitment, things start happening to try to pull you away. So if you've never prayed this prayer, pray this prayer with us for salvation. And it comes from Romans 10 and 9. It says, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you for my salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. It's that simple. You're God's. You're his. You're in relationship with him. You're reconciled. Your sins are forgiven. It's awesome. Now we just need to stay, keep that life <laughs> with him, right? So make sure you feel free to call if you need a prayer partner, you need someone just to partner with you through this, this new life. We're excited for you. And also, though, sometimes we knew that Jesus paid it all. We initially gave him our all, and then we fell back. We took it back. We stopped giving him our all. If that's you, and you're ready to give him your all again, know that he helps you through that, okay? Salvation is a process, okay? It's a process. When we get saved, we don't become perfect. There's still stuff I'm battling. There's stuff God has brought me through, but there's stuff that I'm like, it's tough. I got to figure out how to season it with sugar and not hot sauce. Amen? <laughs> I hit the other day. I was like, so, Lord, when you said season it, you didn't mean red pepper. You got it. I got it, Lord. He's bringing me through. Y'all pray. That level of patience. I feel like sometimes, like, the car is just, you know how you step on that gas and it's, uh, and I'm revving. I'm like, what, what is going on? That patience. God is working on all of us, right? But give your life back to him and let him work on you. Our prayer also for those who are rededicating their lives. Lord, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. The prayer for rededication you can say with us is 1 John 1, 9. Dear God, we confess our many sins to you. Thank you for your forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for cleansing us from all wickedness. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome back. We're excited about what you are going to do and what God is going to do for you. If Music Fellowship wants to come forward, we're going to stay moving forward.
like you, oh God, and that your perfect will will be done in our lives, oh God. And we know that when that, the perfect will is done in our lives, oh God, it affects the people that we are around, oh God. And that the, the hateful things we used to do, oh God, we won't do them no more, oh God. But the way we used to talk to people, oh God, we'll talk differently, oh God. Even the way we walk, oh God, you'll change our walk, oh God. Our attitude, oh God, you'll change it to an attitude of gratitude, oh God. So we thank you, oh God, for your newness that you give us in your son, Jesus Christ. So God, we pray, oh God, that we would dedicate ourselves, oh God, to you on this day, oh God, to move forward, oh God, not look back, realizing, oh God, that you died on Calvary, you forgave us of our sins, oh God, and we, oh God, have been given that power to go because we are in your ambassadors, oh God. So we pray, oh God, that your perfect will will be done on earth, oh God, as it is in heaven. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Tonight we have Bible study on Zoom, and next Saturday we have our Saturday service of Bible study on Zoom. But we are really excited because October 17th at 5 o'clock we have Jay Kelly. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, then we're back to Saturday service and Bible study. Uh, we will figure out what we will do for fellowship fun. I think we're going to. Um, talk a little bit about harvest and, and you know celebrations. On fifth Saturdays, we always have fellowship fun. So plan for trivia. I think I'm going to do multiple choice this time. We did music trivia last time, and our participants did really well, but it probably would have helped uh, if I'd had some multiple choice. So we'll do that. We thank Dad and Deacon Hug, uh, Deacon Walt, excuse me, for your suggestions during that time. We'll, we'll do that again. So join us on fifth Saturday. Remember, it's not a Saturday service. If we're allowed out and about again, we'll actually hopefully be able to take a field to it even, okay? So stay tuned on Facebook for those announcements. We thank you for joining us, and we are ready to sing our fellowship song. <laughs>
super yes. far anniversary. So we are learning because I didn't get to see it. So thank you. Chris. Yes, we got it. We had the real thing last week. Yes. So it was hard to do it with the track. We didn't know what was happening. But we thank her for the track and we thank you for the track, track Ron. For the drama company, man. Again, God bless you. Remember Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. We are excited about what God is going to be doing in your life this week and the rest of your life. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Amen. Amen.